Hey guys, Nathan Masters here with Brick System Brothers. We are on Brickset, which is a uh, one of my favorite LEGO websites. It is a database, kind of a catalog of pretty much everything LEGO puts out. And what I'm looking at today is a list of the sets that were released in 2020. So uh, just a quick overview here. It displays them 200 at a time, and it says there's 821 sets in this category. Um, so, you know, is that really the case? Did LEGO actually release 821 uh, sets this year, in this past year in 2020? And actually, the way that Brickset handles everything, this is including all the little stuff like keychains and gear and books. So anything that receives an entry in the database, which isn't always your typical set, like here's the Coliseum, of course, so uh, this would definitely be considered a typical LEGO set. Um, but about, you know, how many of this 821 are kind of the other things that we wouldn't really consider a LEGO set? And then the big question, if I buy, if I want to buy one of every LEGO set released in 2020, how much is that going to cost me? Um, so for that kind of thing, you probably don't want to consider books and magazine gifts because those actually don't have a uh, retail value, um, but that is included in this 821 number. So uh, there is a way to look at it. It's going to involve a little bit of work in Excel. Let's, uh, let's do that today. Let's have some fun with our little download and um, Brickset is more than happy to do so, providing a CSV file of all 821 items in their database for 2020. So I can save that and open it up in Excel. And so here is the Excel worksheet with all of the 2020 sets from Brickset. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to have to do is narrow the scope down a little bit. If we scroll down, we can see that there are, there should be 800 and some, yeah, 825 entries. Um, actually 824 because the first row is just titles. So Brickset officially has 824 uh, sets on record for 2020. But as you start looking closer here, um, you'll notice that some of these are maybe not uh, the typical set that you would consider when someone says, oh yeah, there were like 100 LEGO sets this year. So gear is a big one that people forget about sometimes. Um, magnets, plushies, keychains. Um, so technically these are still sets, but for the kind of overview I want to do, I, I want to exclude gear. Um, I also want to exclude magazine gifts. So I think somewhere in here, right here is a bunch of magazine gifts. Um, this is also kind of an individual thing that LEGO puts out. It has a minifig count and a piece count, but as a gift it doesn't have a price. Um, and it's not always available to uh, everyone that would be able to buy a regular Lego set. So you know I want to look at the stuff like City, um, except in this case the City's a magazine gift. Um, the sub theme here should just show here's dots, extra dots, series one. So this would be a regular set. Four dollars, 109 pieces. That's the kind of uh, stuff that I want to take into consideration when kind of breaking this down. Um, but I want to get rid of some of the other stuff that would maybe skew it a little bit, just in terms of, you know, what is a typical Lego set. Um, so let's go ahead and knock out some of those. I'm going to kind of select the area of the uh, workbook that I need to sort. So I've got all this sorted, and then I'll just use some sorting stuff here with... Uh, Excel. So I can sort by column B. I'm going to do cell values A to Z. So that will put everything here in the theme in alphabetical order. Um, so architecture of course up at the top. Um, these three are regular sets, art regular sets. Okay now we get to books. So books would be an example of something I want to exclude because there's not actually any pieces in these uh, and these in particular are magazines, so uh, Brickset considers these an individual item for their database, which it is, and it should be cataloged 
but I don't want it for this analysis. So I'm going to go through here, everything in books, we're going to delete. And I think just delete all the rows as well, like that. So that gets rid of all the books magazine stuff. We've got four art sets, brick sketches, yep, those are all good. Brick heads, that classifies as a typical set. Okay, here's something interesting. The city, parts for city, build your own adventure. Doesn't really have any data. Um, it does have a set number, but it isn't really your, uh, your typical Lego set that you would go out and buy off a shelf. So I'm gonna delete this one. If you don't agree with the specific way I'm doing this, um, there's nothing really stopping you from doing this on your own. It's just a download. It gives you a comma separated value file, CSV, and then you can open that with Excel or Google Sheets and then do all of this on your own. So we've got city, design your own city set. That was interesting, but there was um, opportunities for different piece counts, so we don't want that. Um, I'm going to take out all the magazine gifts except for Deep Sea Explorers. I wonder why that doesn't have a uh, price on it. I'll see if I can find a price for that and keep it in the analysis. Magazine gift, those have to go. Okay, Deep Sea Explorers, those are all good. City, city, city. Product collection. Are we going to keep those in? I'd say no because they consist of three, you know, two or three regular sets. So just going to get rid of product collections. Here's another one. Okay, my edits have been completed. Uh, basically what I did is I took out all the gear, all the stuff that isn't really a set, and narrowed it all down. And then I also added in another column over here. Uh, CPP stands for cents per piece, and it's a measure of value. So I've multiplied the price in dollars by 100 to get cents, and then divided by the number of pieces in the next column over. So uh, here's the formula, 100 times this cell divided by this cell will give you a cent per piece measure. Um, and then I also added a color scale to this entire column, and I set the median of the color scale to 10. So a good average cent per piece measure for Lego sets is about 10 cents a piece. And uh, the color scale just shows, you know, yellow is your average. So if it's in the yellow, it's pretty close to 10. Green is going to be below average. So a higher value set, you're getting more pieces for your money. So like your extra dots series bags are down a closer to four cents a piece. Uh, consider these are smaller pieces. so. It's not just uh, a one major fits all kind of deal. Uh, and then there's a few red ones that show some that are really bad. The biggest defender is actually the white base plate uh, because it's one piece for $8. So of course that's 800 cents per piece. Although a base plate is 32 by 32 studs, it's, it's hardly a piece uh, that you can compare to other Lego pieces. Um, so keep in mind, this also doesn't represent the entire stock that you can find on lego.com right now or any time last year. This is only sets that were introduced in 2020. So what was the total number that I ended up with after kind of trimming it down? Uh, 464 new sets added to Lego uh, set inventory. Um, there were a total of 984 minifigs a total of 198,363 pieces in those 464 sets. Keep in mind the first row is titles, so you have to go back here. And a total combined value of $19,311.44. Um, the last few sets here in the list actually don't have a price because they were gift with purchase promotions and there was also one employee gift. So we do have part counts for these. Um, some of them have minifigs. They're still considered a set. You could, uh, all these gift with purchases are pretty easy to find except for maybe one or two. The employee gift would be harder to find but um, still ticks all the boxes to be considered an official Lego set. Um, interesting thing with the numbering here as well, you usually get these in uh, the millions 
four zero zero and then the year is uh, after that 400 so four zero zero 2020 is how they usually number the employee gifts last year was the Christmas X-Wing if I remember correctly uh, this year's is pretty interesting I think there are a couple of reviews on YouTube for the employee gift this year about a thousand pieces so pretty good gift again that wasn't uh, sold regularly so there isn't a price associated with it basically what that does is it gives it a zero cent per piece value uh, which is the highest you can have um, but you know if you went to go and buy these today it would still you know some of these going for twenty dollars so kind of a regular set for the gift with purchases um, but just the way it works out in the data kind of different so uh, there's there's actually a lot you can do with this now um, if I select the entire workspace I can sort all of these columns so I could sort it by number and look at the set numbers here um, sorting by theme and sub theme you could actually determine how many sets were in city or Harry Potter um, and sub theme just kind of narrows it down even further uh, we have the entire list of set names so everything that was given an official name is listed here uh, we also have the minifigures in each set and there were a couple of these that I had to go I used the uh, brick set and rebrickable to kind of fill in some blanks I think the Super Mario collectible minifigure series didn't have all the piece counts so I had to go to rebrickable and enter those there were like 10 sets to enter and there was also I ended up leaving in one gear set um, and it should be let's see that was like a 11.99 or 12.99 uh, right here the stationary pencil box with minifig uh, since it has a minifig I decided to leave it in the analysis um, but it actually didn't show the minifig or the pieces uh, from the brick, uh, brick set file so I added in one um, minifig and three pieces just the way that Lego inventories those is one for the legs one for the torso and one for the head um, I count them a little different you guys probably count them a little different but officially it would be considered just three pieces so this is also one of our uh, orange or red cent per piece boxes just because the majority of the expense here going towards that pencil case or pencil box which isn't brick built it's like a canvas or something cardboard um, but there is a minifigure so you, you know that's maybe two dollars worth one dollars worth of actual Lego in the set um, so all things to keep in mind when you're doing this kind of analysis uh, as a data guy this is kind of interesting for me so I could look at this for a while um, even just taking the time to put this together uh, I kind of enjoy that kind of thing so it's not really a chore um, but now that I have this on hand if you guys want me to um, organize this a certain way or do a video series about you know data that you could extract from this um, I would be happy to do so I just don't know you know what people would be interested in so I kinda wanted to put this video out and show people what can be done with a little bit of Excel and um, the data that's readily available on the internet specifically on Brickset so thanks to them for making that an easy download thanks for watching along today guys a little bit different uh, on the analysis and data side of things but still related to Lego um, this is kind of where my passions cross over because I like to work with data quite a bit and use Excel for all this stuff so um, kind of bringing the Lego into that um, workspace is a lot of fun for me to work with all of this put on the color grading and all of that so I, I've enjoyed making this kind of content and would definitely be open to doing more if you guys want to see it thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Brick System Brothers